Hi, I'm Seamless, and today I'm going to show you how to take ZGE with the FL 20.9 beta that's currently available and use it to take a unique color and a webcam and create a real-time XYZ controller. Wee, wee, yeah, ha 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 ha. It's a little bit jank, but that's okay. Actually, most of the jank that's happening right now is because of my hilarious computer and my hilarious webcam. But let's talk about how is how is does so this is uh, a regular zig window happening here but here's the actual thing and i'm i'll just show you directly the, the the thing that changed that made this work all of this so before before you already had the capability to see this this is um zge having rgb average put out as individual rg and b and also total luminance value as a as controllers, which is super cool. Um, but when it comes to the more complicated things like what we're doing right now, like you we need to have a lot of those. You need to have more than one. Um, and when we talked about this in the alpha forum and this is in the beta mouse, and that means I can talk about it. They, they just changed it now. And now you can have a bunch, you can have, um, you can have as many as there are buffers. You can have one for every buffer that there is inside. And that's just the beginning. That's just the beginning of some cool, some incredible coolness coming not just because i figured out how to do this this was just the first thing oh boy there have been more changes but um the how this essentially is coming down is that there's uh the camera coming in and then i'm made of mask so i'm using this this roll of green tape and this is the, I, I mentioned a unique color and here's the regular camera footage that i'm putting in you go to add content you go to add webcam and then there's your controller you put it in there and it, a little bit works like you could you could treat a video input like you can treat an audio input, and then after you do that, um, you link it. And I, what I tend to do is I put it in a buffer, and then I make the buffer the thing that feeds the camera into other stuff. Um, there's you don't have to do that, but for for lots of reasons, it tends to be more efficient. So that later, you, 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 there's only the camera's only going through one thing to get into the system, and not coming in multiple times because sometimes for some reason. It might actually not do this now because there have been improvements, but before you used to stretch the image in weird ways, and it kind of has to be the same shape as the mask. So uh, you get the output from it, and then uh, this is all just color correction. This is just uh, um, changing the saturation, the contrast, real, just trying real hard to isolate the green. So the idea, like I super ideally, what I would do is I, I would go further and do things like layer it against blue and red solid background colors on subtract in the buffer and leaving literally only visible just the green bits as just a black and white mat and then that'd be the end of it but this um also works fine because it can, the buffers put out individual rgb and values for example at the the z buffer right now um getting it to just say that it gets getting bigger and smaller um i'm <laughs> For reasons, I'm attaching the Z to this width and height control instead of the actual size control because it does stuff to what the X and Y values do. But moral of the story is um, this thing's green value, less green, smaller, more green, bigger. It works. And the other guys are X and Y. So here's the, here's the Y control. See, it's bright up here, dark up there, bright down here, dark over here. So these two dudes are putting out essentially opposite green values for location top or bottom. Now I've done that for, uh, X and Y. So that was the Y or is that X? I actually forget which axis is which literally, but the point is you do them from both up and down. And I'm, I'm working on ways to figure out shapes and such and colors and combos and other things to do rotation. And then we can talk about 3d spatial tracking. Woo. But for the time being, um, you get those values and then you do some stuff outside of ZG. So <laughs> what you do, you get yourself a formula controller. Oh my God, the formula controller. So what we're doing here is 0.5 minus A plus B. What this has given us, because the X and Y parameters tend to be just these center plus or minus like faders. So what we want is 0.5 and then it's plus one of those gradients with the subtract filter on, which is why it's doing that. It gets darker. And then that makes it minus the other one. And then if there's the difference between the two, because the reason why the this the other one worked for the Z value is because there's just the one and if there's more, there's more. But if I only, if I have just one buffer with just one gradient, I could do that and then that would change the lightness and darkness values and not evenly. 
But if I compare that with a phase flipped version of it, that's the other kind, then the change in size doesn't matter. It, you see how it's not changing X value or Y value despite the size change. It will only do it if the size change is relative changed up or down. 0.5 plus A minus B. 0.5 minus A plus B. It's start 0.5, subtract, and then add the last one. There's, you got to basically have, it has to be a positive value. Um, so sometimes that gets wrong, like just, and just invert it. Just flip around, flip, out, flip around your operations. You got to keep them operated. And then uh, I did one for X, one for Y, and then Z is just a straight value again. But then I applied them all to these dudes. You can see them moving around. Yeah. So here's our X, here's our Y, but these things are light. Like the light, especially because we're talking about the way that it's determining the level of the green here. Like if you're if you were to just see this, like you're saying, cool, there's green. Like what level is that exactly? How would you calculate that? And like literally, li literally, I try to say linearly and literally, but if you were to imagine this value as a linear thing, like a fader, it would be the total coverage of green on the screen. And that's like maximum value, perfect bright green. As close to that is a hunt that that is what 100% green is. So anything less than that is isn't that right? So then what is this? That's like nothing. That's barely anything. And the, the the sort of result is that you have to you have to really really adjust these values to get them to go anywhere. And this was just by hand. I, I double curved it and I'm just adjusting it to kind of keep it moving around with the visual. Now if um if your goal was to track something with the visual, like this is all well and good. But if your goal is just to actually use this to change sound. You barely have to care because then whatever you're not actually seeing the thing. This this my goal of being like, oh, am I making changes happening right now? Am I am I actually like I'm? I'm wow, well, that's actually good tracking pretty okay. Um, I'm rocking 15 FPS right now because my camera can't keep up. But the um, uh, moral of the story is that like the you you with your hand with you tracking the way you wanted to like the differences that you think are di like because what always bums me out about a motion controller is when you move away and it does one thing and then you move a different way and then it does the same thing as though it has no way of knowing that all of that you did that you thought was different wasn't different like it, they didn't know that and this way it pretty well there's nothing you can do that is the same it's actually really hard to be the same but it also is the same configuration and location of the object will pretty much always give you the same result if i like ha, ha, like i might not know where it goes but if i get it back to that location, it will react that way. So that means if I make literal things happen, there are there are consequences that are repeatable, and that's the key. That's the thing that makes this awesome, and that's um something that will. So like this is just the beginning of just a whole bunch of cool crap I want to try, and this is just now it's now it's things that we can now it's things that we can know about, because the FL twenty point nine beta is has been out for a while, but uh yeah go get that if you can and you haven't yet, and try this out. Ha! <laughs> um, I'll put up this project to download so that you can. Um, yeah, but you will need a webcam, and you also need a color that you can identify as being different. So R, G, and B, but um, there's ways to mess with the color correction to force other colors to be R, G, or B, even if they're not. So and that's what the hue is for. That's what you do. So like, if you have like a purple or something that is the only version of that color visible in your space then you can you just do that big saturation thing. You move the hue around until it looks green, and then now you have that value. Now you have that value control because it should look like the only green thing on the screen. So that's what you want to do. You want to be able to isolate a color enough that, like I actually just went and bought a bunch of colored tape so I could do these experiments. Um, and that's what you, know, you more or less need. Yeah. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, or all that good stuff. And as usual, have a nice day.